All right, so let's take a look at an example here and establishing a datum reference frame on a part that looks like this one. Now, this here is a part that we have been talking about all along, and let's say that I want you to set this part up to the HLP datum reference frame. So H, if I was to call off H first, here's our datum feature H. So what does H establish for you? H is going to establish a plane. So what I have is I have established a plane. Now you know what that plane does. It's automatically going to stop one translation, it's going to stop up and down. It's also going to stop a rotation in this direction. You see it can't rotate like this. And also it's not going to be able to rotate like this. So it uh, constrains three degrees of freedom. The next one in the order here, this is datum feature L. It can't take anything away that H already given us. So this is going to establish a plane L. And so L would look like this. And so what is that going to do? It's going to stop the translation in this direction, and it's also going to stop the part from rotating. So, so far what we've done is that we've stopped two degrees of, of freedom here. And then now we're going to see what the next datum feature is. It says datum feature P, and datum feature P, it looks like it's that edge. And you see what that one does, that stops the final degree of freedom, and now the part can't translate back and forth. So all six degrees of freedom have been constrained, and now we can make our measurements, or be able to discuss or talk about this part. All right, let's take another look at another one. N-E-H, you gotta be careful what you spell in here sometimes, but N, N is the primary datum, and let's see what that is, that is a face, so a plane surface, so that's gonna stop one translation, it's gonna stop two rotations. You can see the rotation in this direction and this direction. Now, nothing could be taken away. That's what it has. So the next one, E, what will E give us? Well, E would give us uh, an axis there. Mm -hmm. So that would stop it up and down. It would stop, also stop it back and forth then. Does it do any rotations then? No, no rotations. Yeah, so and the reason see. it doesn't do the rotation because the rotations were taken away from this primary datum. So this one cannot do anything else with it. So right? what's the only thing left on this one left? We have three on the first one and two on the second one, there's only one degree of freedom left. What is this part still allowed to do? Well, this part is still allowed to well, rotate. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing that this tertiary datum can do is it has to stop the rotation. Let's see what they selected for rotation. Yeah, now you take a look here and see datum feature H is talking about that bottom surface. Talking about that bottom surface, that's the one that stops the rotation on here. You notice also what I'm doing here is, is I'm always relating the datum features. You see N was called off first, I started off as flat, then I said E. Now when I call off E, I tell you the relationship of E to N, and then when I say H, I say the relationship of H to E and to N, or to N and to E in that order. So I'm always relating one back to the other so I can see how stable that part is in the datum reference frame. Now, in the earlier standards, in the 1994, that was, we were supposed to do that also, but it really never said you were supposed to do it. In the, in the 2009 standard, the new one, it actually says that you better relate these datum features. Otherwise, later on, when we want to do stack-up calculations or you want to build gauges or you want to do any kind of relationship, a tolerance analysis, it's hard to do it without that relationship. So we're always relating one to the other.